Let's get it straight into it with you. We usually put up the candidates that are running in the, for Fed chair up on a screen, and underneath, and we can put it up for our viewers right now, we'll write Dove, Hawk, Dove, Hawk, right. Hawk, Dove. And under Janet Yellen, 99% of people label that a Dove. Fed Chair Janet Yellen, a dove, and you're saying she's not. Paint me the picture as to why. Well, I, I think it's a uh, question of situations. In the context of three, four years ago, she undoubtedly was a dove. I think right now, the fact that inflation is so low, the shocks seem to be so persistent, and yet she's quite adamant in, you know, pointing to a December hike, and almost undoubtedly she had three hikes dotted in for next year. Um, she seems to be saying that she thinks the Phillips curve, the cyclical pressures are going to dominate and the Fed has to move. Relative to the market, that makes her a hawk and relative to some of the other candidates as well. So who's the dovish candidate? Um, <laughs> Powell, you know, even though he doesn't have much of a monetary policy persona, th there seems to be a perception that he's slightly more dovish. I suspect Cohn would be more dovish and, and the guy at the, all the way at the bottom of the screen, if you have him, cash carry, like, you know, super dovish. But I, I, th I think that the, you know, the doves are... Um, I mean, the, the one big dove, I, I'd say, would be Cohen rather than and Powell, sort of a moderate Interesting. Uh, but why? Because when we think of continuity, we think Powell, right? I mean, that's the whole thing. He's, he's a Republican, but with continuity, and that's why he might be the safer play and actually get through Congress. So why would you not label him on the same camp as Yellen? Well, some of the comments that he's made is, uh, have been slightly more dovish than what Yellen is saying. And, and the way I would define a dove, you know, if I were the president and in, in my terms, I'd define a dove as someone who would be sympathetic to the idea that if you get tax reform and tax cuts, that the supply side is going to bail you out in terms of any kind of inflation or aggregate demand consequences. And so I'd say, okay, so say we get a tax bill. Which, which ones will automatically say we've got to start hiking faster and which ones will say let's wait and see what the supply side effects are. And, and from the market point of view, I think the second category are the doves and the first category is sort of more hawkish. That's the very Keynesian framework we're talking about. So, Tom, let's take that scenario and place it into the curve. Uh, if that plays out and you see a Powell and he's more on the dovish side than even Yellen would be, what happens to the curve? Uh, <clears throat> I think we saw yesterday a good preview of what would happen to the curve because we saw the uh, kind of trial balloon article that hit the headlines late in the afternoon and the, the market rallied. Um, I think you see a little bit of a steepening of the curve. Um, I think that uh, Powell doesn't really have a whole lot in the way of, uh, you know, a good sort of text of commentary about how he views inflation and, and how he views the current rate environment and as, as supporting more inflation growth. But uh, I think the suggestion is that, you know, he would be a little bit more lenient uh, you could see more inflation kind of uh, continue to accelerate because uh, the last few months we have had um, some signs that we're getting some building pressure there. I think that he would foster that so you would see long end rates kind of sell off a little bit further than, uh, than what would happen in the front end because obviously he'd be keeping those rates a little bit lower than otherwise.